So let's pick up the story now. We have those 16 smooth, transparent stones sitting in front of us that are not shining in any way, shape, or form, and yet they're the best effort from the brother of Jared. Look at verse 6. It came to pass that when the brother of Jared had said these words, Behold, the Lord stretched forth his hand and touched the stones one by one with his finger, and the veil was taken off from the eyes of the brother of Jared, and he saw the finger of the Lord, and it was as the finger of a man, like unto flesh and blood. And the brother of Jared fell down before the Lord, for he was struck with fear. Look at verse 13. When he had said these words, behold, the Lord showed himself unto him and said, Because thou knowest these things, ye are redeemed from the fall. Therefore you brought back into my presence. Therefore I show myself unto you. Now look closely at 14. Behold, I am he who was prepared from the foundation of the world to redeem my people. Now here's the key part. Behold, I am Jesus Christ. I am the Father and the Son. In me shall all mankind have life, and that eternally, even they who shall believe on my name, and they shall, notice the word here, circle it, become my sons and my daughters. You'll notice he has the title of the Father and the Son. He is already the Son, but he becomes our Father, we become his sons and daughters through the covenant connection that we make with him. Um, must have cross-reference in the, in the margin there next to verse 14 is Mosiah, Mosiah chapter 5 verse 7 where King Benjamin talks about how we become the children of Christ through the covenant that we make with him. Now notice verse 15. Never have I showed myself unto man whom I have created, for never has man believed in me as thou hast. There have been a lot of talks given and articles written on this particular verse, this statement, never have I showed myself unto man, because we know that before the brother of Jared we have Noah and Enoch and, and Adam, and they've, they've all seen God, but he says, never have I showed myself unto man whom I have created. So it implies that there's something different about the brother of Jared's experience, and there are a lot of reasons. I'm just going to mention a few of them here. This is not an exhaustive list. One of them is, look how he introduced himself in 14, I am Jesus Christ. Possible that previous to this, all of his other introductions has been to, to people have been as Jehovah or Yahweh in the, the Hebrew context, his, his name in the Old Testament, not as Jesus Christ directly. So that's a possibility. The other possibility is, is that the brother of Jared has such faith that it's as if the veil could not hold him back. So maybe it's God having revealed himself to others differently than the brother of Jared with his level of faith. He, he says, never has man believed in me as thou hast. So he's drawing attention to that distinction. You have more faith than anybody I've ever had in front of me before. That's pretty remarkable. And then he tells him, look, can you see that you're created after mine own image? Look at verse 16, behold, this body which ye now behold is the body of my spirit, and man have I created after the body of my spirit, even as I appear to be, or unto thee to be in the spirit, will I appear unto my people in the flesh. It's as if he's saying, you're looking at my spirit body, the body of my spirit, and the way you're seeing me is how people are going to see me when I'm walking the streets of Galilee and Jerusalem, as I'm going to appear to people in the flesh. Uh, so perhaps he's never revealed himself unto mankind before in this form, but only ever in the resplendent uh, spirit, uh, godly form of the great Jehovah of the Old Testament. And there are other options as well. The point is, verse 17, now, as I, Moroni, said, I could not make a full account of these things which are written, therefore it sufficeth me to say that Jesus showed himself unto this man in the Spirit, even after the manner and in the likeness of the same body, even as he showed himself unto the Nephites. So now you get the resurrected body implied, because that's what got shown to the Nephites after. So you've got all these different layers of possibilities to piece together. So he ministers unto this man and uh, 
Verse 19, because of the knowledge of this man, he could not be kept from beholding within the veil. So he's rent that veil, that cloud that had, had enshrouded God in the first two chapters, it's now gone, and he sees things because he's acted in faith, he's moved forward on his covenant path that God has given him, and it's beautiful.